Blog Talk Radio. On the Psychic Talk Radio Network, I'm Mary Brown, one of your hosts for today, and today is, uh, I think, I have to ask my co-host when he comes on, but I think this is the last show of 2019. My gosh, this year went fast. But before we get into all of that and to make sure that it actually is the last show of 2019, let's bring on my fabulous co-host, Dax Carlisle. Dax, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes, I am. I am here. I'm excited to be here on our last show. Yeah, this is our our last show for uh, for Psychic Talk. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little – you got me confused now. It's, it's our last show. Uh, it's our last Saturday show. It's the last show that I'm going to be a host on. You're going to be a host on. It's not the last show of the year, though, because – and we can mention this as a little, you know, little nugget here that uh, you should tune in on Monday because Catherine Hahn is doing the last show of 2019 for the network. It's also the wrap up of her series of shows that she's doing right now, and uh, we're going to do like a little on air party. Um, I haven't even mentioned this to the other hosts that they can you know call into the show i'm going to try to call into the show and uh we're going to do a wrap-up of uh of the year and terrific kind of on-air party but this, celebrating but this is another a, year of psychic talk right so but this is the last psychic saturday show of yes, that's what i meant the last psychic saturday yep we'll be back next year and uh my first show back is actually Friday, January 3rd. You, you really want to tune in for that show. We're going to be doing New Year's readings, Dr. Rose Wilkerson and myself welcoming you to 2020. It's going to be the very first show of the year, followed by cool. your mystical music show, which looks really good. You're doing a new ritual for a new year on January 4th. So we got some great stuff coming up. Yes, we do. I'm excited about 2020. How about you? Are you looking forward to it, yeah. or are you dreading it, or what? <laughs> I was initially looking forward to uh, to 2019, and very quickly it, it, it turned out to be, you know, not the best of years. And I I'm happy for it to be over. I have a a <laughs> lot of I have a lot of uh, anticipation for 2020. I think it's going to be a really good year. We're going to talk about that in January, of course. We're going to do some shows where I know on Friday the 10th, we're going to talk about personal year numbers for 2020, Dr. Rose and I. And then the following, uh, the next day on Saturday, January 11th, you and I are doing a show. uh, It's our first psychic talk. Uh, sorry, I keep saying that. It's our first Psychic Saturday show back on the air in 2020. We're going to do a Welcome to 2020 World Year of Four. So we're going to be ter- talking about four and and doing personal year numbers on that show as well. And, you know, we all live through these nine-year cycles of number, the, the nine numbers, and uh, we'll talk about what the, all that means and what the World Year of Four means for a structure in numerology. And, right, you know, so there's 20, a lot to look yeah. forward to. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, yeah. there's a, already we're starting out 2020 with a bang. I wanted to mention really quick to everybody listening that if they haven't already, they need to go find our Facebook group. Uh, we're 
Psychic Talk Radio on Facebook. You can join the group and keep up with all the shows and everything going on. Everything's posted in there. Sometimes the hosts post different things as well that are really interesting that you'll love. For example, I post a card of the day every day in our Facebook group, and our card of the day for today comes from the Oracle of the Unicorns deck. <laughs> and <laughs> got it. Why not? You need the unicorns now and then. And the card today is about intuition. You know, so it's saying that, like, you know, listen mm. to your intuition. Practice feeling the energy of, you know, if you're considering a problem, like the different options. You know, like sit there, sit with each of the options that that you might uh, make or decide to choose when making a big decision and just sit with the idea of like you're doing it, what's your intuition telling you about that, Taking, making that choice? Does it feel right? Does it feel good? Do you feel up? Do you feel down? Um, the more that we pay attention to and try to tune in and listen, the more we're going to recognize the ways in which our intuition and inner guidance, higher self, are trying to reveal itself to us and trying to guide us. So that's the card for the day um, from, again, the Oracle of the Unicorns deck by Cordelia Francesca Brabs, and that is posted in our Facebook group, Psychic Talk Radio. Come join us. We have a lot of fun in there. Awesome stuff. I also want to mention that our Friday... Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Go right ahead. I was going to ask if you had a card for the day or or what the the numerology for the day is. Awesome. Yes, and uh, real quickly, I want to give out the phone number again, 714-816-4628. If you haven't called in yet, we will be taking calls and doing mini readings as well. Plus, we've got a great topic today. We're talking about a new spread, a new tarot spread for the new year, and that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Um, Numerology of day and card of the day. I did want to mention that the Friday and Saturday shows are sponsored by the Tarot Guild, and you'll find us at thetarotguild.com. We also have a Facebook group, which is growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, uh, I, you know, we'll get like 10, 15, 20 new members in there and I'll welcome them and then it's a day or two later and I've got another 10 you know it, it's just been crazy the last few weeks or so Mary yeah I think people are finding it and I think that they're enjoying themselves too I love to see all the posts in, in both of the Tarot Guild Facebook group as well as the Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group Yes, and our brand new website, thetarotguild.com, is uh, you know kind of in beta stage. We're just launching it, but there's already 70 people on there, and it's free to join over at thetarotguild.com. We'd love for you to come and chat tarot with us. There's all kinds of great features on the website. It's kind of like Facebook for tarot. It's got all the same features as Facebook with the, the groups and the friending and the private chat and we have open chat and direct messaging and articles and groups and the whole gambit so go over and check that out the tarotguild.com for the card of the day i got the moon card which i love mm-hmm. that uh it really fits in with this time of year we're moving into 2020 people are going to be uh setting goals and what i want you to do if you, if you think of the moon card it's talking about the shadow aspect. So if you're making changes in your life, like you're, you're going to quit smoking, you're going to eat better, you know, you, <laughs> whatever, whatever goals you're setting for yourself for, tw- for 2020, take some time, and, and, and it's hard to do sometimes. Sometimes it's scary to look at the shadow side. But um, what is it that's holding you from making the change? Um, what uh, hidden drives are keeping you doing what you don't want to do? Because any change means that we're moving from something we're doing now that we don't want to do to something we want to do, <laughs> you know. So are there any, any hidden aspects to it? That's what the moon card is, is talking about. Because if you can get in touch with those 
then you can overcome it and we can make those changes for 2020. Does that make sense, Mary? Makes sense to me. Awesome. And the whole date today, uh, 12, 28, 2019, adds up to 25. Two plus five is seven. Seven is the highest spiritual number in numerology. It's the number of the detective, the natural detective, and uh, they want to know how everything works. This is a great day for research, connecting with your spiritual side. It's also a one day because it's the 28th. Two plus eight is 10. One plus zero is one. So take time out for yourself today. It's Saturday. Maybe you need a little spa day or do a spa day at home, you know. Light the candles, get the Epsom salt, you know, get the bath going. (laughs) Pamper yourself a little bit today. So that's my card of the day and the numerology. Wonderful. And I want to give out that number again for anybody who wants to call in for a mini reading or just a chat with us. The number is 714-816-4628. And remember to press 1 on your dial pad if you'd like to be on the air. The switchboard is pretty full right now, but you still might be able to get in. And speaking of that, Dax, do you want to, like, take a couple calls? We've got people who have already been waiting, like, 25 minutes. Yes. Let's, do why do we do that? Okay, so let's see who is out there in the ethers with their burning question. This is Area Code 856. Area Code 856, caller, are you there? Yes, hi, this is Laura in New Jersey. Laura in New Jersey. Hello, Laura. Thanks for calling in. Did you want a mini reading today, or did you just want to talk about... New Year's. I'd like a mini reading. A mini reading. Okay. And what's your question for your reading? I'd like to know what's in stock for me for the coming year for um, work, career. Okay, for career. Dax, do you want to go first? Uh, Laura from New Jersey, what is in store for her career this, this coming year? Hmm, okay, so uh, I'm getting some good signs on this. The King of Coins, King of Pentacles is showing up. There's a potential to become more abundant this year, okay? The cards are saying that you already have all the skills and abilities that you that you need to, to really make a go of it. And... It's it, it's looking like it's uh, like you're in a tr- transition, or you're going sometime this year, because we're looking at the whole year. You might go through a a transition, Laura, uh, where you know one door closes, another door opens. Okay. So yeah, so be on the lookout. I don't know if you're in the midst of that now, or if it's hinting at something coming later, but um, there's a shift. There's a definite shift. And the, the central focus card is talking about uh, growth, action, development, well-being, security. It, it's uh, talking about growth, especially communication and creativity is what's coming up here. That's all Let's good. Let's see what What are you getting, Mary? Okay, good. Okay, well, this is kind of interesting. So, you know, it kind of really fits with what Dax was saying. I think that this is going to, I want to say it's going to be a better year for you career-wise. Um, the thing that the central focus card I got was actually the eight of wands. So to me, that's saying a couple of things. One, it's saying that, like, things may start coming together, like, pretty quickly for you compared to, like, how it's been over the past year. Um, The other thing is, is like, you know, when I think of the eight of ones, I think of like, and I think of like all these arrows flying through the air and like hitting the bullseye. And right next to that eight of ones is the queen of swords. So it's like focus on it, you know, focus on what you want to achieve, set goals for yourself and like just, you know, one after another, I think you have a great potential in 2020 to like really get some momentum going and 
to get some progress happening. Um, part of it, though, too, is, you know, I do think that there is a something that, you know, finally we've got to, like, let go of for this to, before things really start moving for you. So I, so I see a shift like that. That can be, like Dex was describing, kind of like the end of a cycle. And I feel like it's a ten of swords. I feel like it's like the end of limitations. And the seven of pentacles comes up in the past position as if, as if it was like, you know, trying to, um, you know, tread in like quicksand last year as far as like getting momentum going and, and making progress when it comes to career. And I feel that like this year is going to be a, a much better in that way. And then the final card is the Knight of Wands. So I just feel like it's saying like, go for it, <laughs> you know, like really, you know, put your energy behind it. You know, the Knights are about movement. The Knight of Wands, you know, often is like saying like, okay, it's time to move ahead. Um, and with that wands energy, it you know put our passion into it as well. So so that's what I get for you. I hope that uh, what Dax and I had to offer was was helpful to you. And yeah, sounds calling. promising. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Happy New thanks, Year. Thanks, Laura. Bye. Bye. Oh, Mary, I wanted okay. to mention before mm-hmm. we go to the next mm-hmm. caller that. Uh, I'm also in the chat room. In fact, uh, Jean Mori just popped in there saying Happy New Year's. Hi, hi, Jean. Happy New Year's. So, Happy New um, Year, Jean. That's, awesome. That's another way. You know, that's another way you can chat with us during the live shows is to go to the chat room. It's thetarotguild.com slash chat. You know, obviously open it in a separate tab. So you can listen where you're listening if you're listening online and open the chat room. Join us in there. You can even ask for a mini reading right there in the chat room. It's thetarotguild.com forward slash chat. And uh, Jean says, Happy New Year's, Mary. (laughs) Happy New Year, Jean. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and take another call and then – or two, and then we can uh, start talking about our exciting topic. So the next caller that we have is area code 860. Area code 860, caller, are you there? Yes, how are you? Good. What's your name and where are you calling from? This is Amla from Connecticut. Amala from Connecticut. We're rocking the East Coast this morning. What did you want to <laughs> chat about today? Did you want a mini uh, reading? or? Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Okay, and did you have um, a question you wanted a reading yeah, on? Yeah, I was just wondering, um, you know, maybe for the first three months of the year, I don't know how it goes with, with time frame or whatever. It's all spirit anyway. Um, but I was wondering about finding a relationship. Um, it's been a tough year. I let go of somebody and, and it's push and pull, push and pull. And I finally let go and it feels, feels really good. I feel very, um, clean and ready to go for the new year. So sorry. Terrific. So you want to look at those, those first three months of the new year when it comes to relationships and just see kind of what shows up there. Yeah. Is that'd be great. Anything? Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll, I'll go first this time since so that's when first last time, and hmm, I'm just shuffling a little bit. So first three months of the year for you when it comes to relationships, what's that about? Ooh, it's about it's about some interesting stuff here. Okay, so what, yes. you know, what's really interesting is like three of the cards that come up here have the same number. It's a number six. And I kind of do this thing with like the, the numbered cards. When I get three sixes, it talks about success. Okay. Oh, um, no. and, it, and I think also about things getting better. Um, the one of the cards is the six of ones. The other one is the six of pentacles. Six of pentacles is about you know, generosity, giving the kindness, you know, um, the six of wands is like 
recognition, attention. So I, I feel like there's going to be somebody trying to get, get your attention. They may show you kindness. They may be, you know, they're offering something to you because underneath that is the page of pentacles. Um, and okay. the other six that comes up is the six of cups. Now, I know you you had a really tough um, you know, relationship you went through and you let go of it and you're feeling much better. Is there anybody else that you knew in the past? You know, six. I only ask this because the Six of Cups a lot of times is connected to someone we've known before. Um, you know, it could be somebody that we, we liked but, like, nothing ever happened, you know, something like that. But I feel like the Six of Cups is saying at least is somebody you already know. All right. Oh, um, no, not that I know of. No. Okay. I mean, well, just, but I just put a pin I just in want it. To introduce it's, one thing that this mm-hmm. person does is that he just kind of just comes, like, surprisingly three months later. So it wouldn't surprise me if this person tries again. But I know mm. my end. So I'm just right. Saying. Well, <laughs> well, I feel like with the Page of Pentacles is saying like, okay, this is a this is a new phase for you. I don't think it's the okay. relationship you just ended. I feel okay. like it might be somebody that you already know, though. Okay. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and the other, so just kind of, you know, put a pin in that and then, you know, as things like manifest over the next three months, because it's the time period we're looking at, I feel like, you know, the, you know, think about it then and it might become more clear. Um, and then the final card that comes up is the Ten of Pentacles. And, you know, that's terrific. I, I feel like with all this Pentacles energy showing up, we're talking about, you know, this being something that, you know, is it, grounded. You know, it's got yeah. that earth energy. I feel like it's a, it's all really positive cards. But let's see what Dax is getting. Dax? Thank you, Mary. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Interestingly Dax. enough, I got, a, I got pinnacle cards as well. And, you know, it could be really good this year that's coming up. The Nine of Cups card shows up, you know, li- literally the Wish Come True card for oh, you. Oh, wow. There. I'm a, yeah, it, it it's looking really good. In fact, you, you might <laughs> – there are some cards that are indicating you might actually have too many choices at some point <laughs> this year, okay? <laughs> but but the, the tarot does have a, a, a quick little message for you. It's talking about, okay, as you go into 2020, is to think a lot about balance. It okay. wants you to balance your life out. You need more balance between the the relationships, the home life, the the career, work, the the whole, you know, all the facets of your life. It needs to be more balanced. Um, okay. It's almost as if you have too many irons in the fire in some quarters, and it's difficult to make progress in any individual facet of your life, like relationships if things aren't all balanced out. So work on that the first month or two of, of the year, and then it's looking really good. Oh, excellent. This is this is very promising. Thank you so very much. A lot to chew on for sure, and I'm, yep. I'm excited. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for calling. Thanks Happy for New call. Year. Happy New Year. Blessings. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. Okay, well, I think we have time for one more call before we are at the bottom of the hour, as you like to say, (laughs) and um, then we'll share a bit about our topic, and let's see who else is waiting out there. Let's see. We have area code 519. Area code 519. Caller, are you there? Hi, Dax and Mary. This is Jennifer from Canada. Hi, Jennifer from Canada. How are you doing? I'm good. Happy New Year. Happy New yeah, Year. We're officially international now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we love our Canadians. <laughs> so, did you want a mini reading today? Yes, please. Okay. And what was your question? 
Um, I probably maybe physical health relationships with my family. Okay. And just, you know, did you have a specific question about that? No, not really. Okay. So just kind of a, a general reading on like, you know, relationships with family and mm-hmm. um, if any health things do come up, of course, we're not doctors, except Dax is a doctor, but he's not, he, you know, <laughs> that kind of doctor. <laughs> he's not going to perform that open heart surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Dax, do you want to go first? Uh, for sure. Jennifer? The Wheel of Fortune card is the only major arcana card that shows up in this spread. It's the very first card. It's suggesting a change of fortune. Whenever we get that card, you can look forward to, you know, movement in this area. It, it's uh, And it can happen really quickly. The uh, Eight of Wands usually indicates fast movement. Also, uh, communication via telecommunication, fast ways of the Internet. Uh, something along those lines. I'm getting the nostalgia card for you, the, the Six of Cups. You know, look, looking at family life and and uh, and your your memories on that. It's um, talking about all these wands cards. Wow, it's a lot of fire energy. You know, fire is is the the energy of passion. It's it's like getting into that feeling space again. Passion for for family will lead you into the right direction. However, there's a little cautionary thing here about um, maintaining your independence and not getting swallowed up by it. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know, but that's what's coming through. And uh, it's looking like, okay, so there's progress, but it's slow progress. It may be something that unfolds throughout the year versus uh, something suddenly happening in this area. And I'm mostly focusing on family. I'm not really seeing anything. Maybe Mary's getting something, but nothing's really coming through about health per se because I I really didn't ask the question that way. I guess that's part of the problem. (laughs) You know, uh, I just just latched on to that, uh, that family dynamic. Well, what are you getting, Mary? That's good. Mm. You know, it's kind of interesting. I got the Eight of Wands as well. That was like the first card that came up. So this could be that, you know, things kind of, you know, they, sometimes, you know, it's like time just seems to, to fly by. Like we, I said that about 2019. It's like, where did the year go? Um, so that that could be part of it. But I, but I also feel like with the Eight of Wands is saying, like, you know, stay on target, you know, Um and I feel like that that could be for both health and family. You know, like if you if you have specific like goals with your health, um, that's important. You know, to kind of like keep with it. The strength card comes up underneath everything. I feel like it's just showing up on on health to say like, okay, you know, if there's been like a a weakness in some way, um, that you know that's something that that could be getting better. But the big message to me with the strength card is always like okay you know it, there's also like the gentle side of strength there's this desire to kind of you know manage don't overdo it don't overdo anything when it comes to family it's interesting um the cards I'm getting here are kind of interesting you know nothing nothing, nothing potentially you know bad or anything but I, but I feel like this is the thing it, it's saying that there's going to be a point if a, if it hasn't happened already where you feel like you're giving and giving and giving okay and in some ways um there's there seems to be like a imbalance um uh, with with it um the six of pentacles comes up there's this great giving energy to that and then we have the devil card above it now, the devil card um, can sometimes indicate, you know, control issues, um, whether, you know, somebody's trying to, you know, control, manipulate a situation or conversation. You know, it, it's like that kind of issue 
can come up, and sometimes even with the devil card, you know, if someone's dealing with um, issues that they're not in control of, you know, we think of like addictions and any of the isms, right, with that. And we end with the two of swords. So two of swords is, is about balance, but there's always this sort of sense of like, you know, it's like a draw, you know. So I, I feel like, you know, we need to, of course, you know, choose um, – yeah, choose our battles carefully, but also know that um, you're being generous with people, whether it's with your time, energy, um, or material things, is never a waste. That It's more about the giving, that it's not necessarily about, um, you know, the, the, you know, the response. So I, so I mm-hmm. think that, this is something to kind of keep in mind. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. No, that's good. And Dax, when I do my own cards, I get the wheel of fortune for next year a lot as well. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Confirmation. <Awesome>. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good New Year. All right. You too. Thanks for your call. Bye, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. All right. Well, it is the bottom of the hour. Dax, should we talk about upcoming shows? Yes, and then we can go into our New Year's spread for 2020 that I literally just came up with a week ago. So it's uh, really going to be fun there. And if you're hanging on the phone lines, you know, stick with us because we're probably going to have time, hopefully, to take a call or two in a little bit here so stick with us if you can and uh, upcoming shows we already talked about some of this already I want to let you know again uh, tomorrow there uh, sorry not tomorrow <laughs> Monday I keep forgetting there's no show on on Sundays because it's the fifth Sunday of the month and also the angelic realm show is uh, on hiatus until later in 2020 when Maria comes back with new shows. So uh, there's no show this Sunday uh, or the following Sunday, actually, uh, till we get to the 12th when Sharon is going to come back with her show, Magic Universe. But there's a doubleheader on Monday, Wisdom of the Soul with Janice Butte. And as I mentioned, Catherine Hahn is doing her Compassionate Light Healing and Guidance show. She'll be taking calls. She's wrapping up her series of shows on the heart of service. I love that. Perfect for this time of year. We're also wrapping up the year for Psychic Talk Radio. It's the last broadcast of 2019. And we'll do a little party on air. I'm going to try to join Catherine on air. Maybe get some of the other hosts to join us as well. And, uh, Bring out the new year for Psychic Talk. Then the very next show is Friday, January 3rd. It's our first show of the year. Happy New Year. It's going to be Dr. Rose and I. We're going to welcome you to 2020 and do New Year's readings. And uh, I'll probably be mentioning the uh, New Year's spread again that we're going to be talking about in just a few minutes. And then Saturday, January 4th, a new ritual for a new year on Mystical Musings with Mary Brown here. Plus, you're taking calls too, Mary, right? Yes, yes I am. Wow. We've got a well, lot of good coming stuff up. coming up. You can always find all the shows at psychictalk.net slash upcoming. That'll have all the upcoming shows for you. Awesome. So, Dax, you got to tell everybody about this New Year's tarot spread that you created because it is fabulous and where they can find it and how well how did you even come up with it? Awesome. Yeah, well, it was about a week ago. The universe guided me to create this new New Year's spread. The universe, spirit, the angels, however you want to look at it. But I really felt guided. It was like I didn't want to just, you know, go out there and just grab one of the New Year's spreads. There's tons of them, of course, you know, for for the New Year's, and use that for our last show of the year. Um, And 
you know, a big chunk of those New Year's spreads that are already out there uh, are about, you know, pulling a card for each month. You end up with, you know, somewhere between like 12 and 15 cards, maybe up to as much as 20 cards, depending on the spread. And I always found them to be a, a little bit unwieldy. Now, if you want to follow along, there's an image of the spread on an article that I did for this. It's called A Tarot Spread for the New Year. You're going to find it under articles on thetarotguild.com. So you can just go over to the website, thetarotguild.com, and click on articles in the navigation bar on any of the pages there. Or type in thetarotguild.com slash article. And it should be actually the very first article, a tarot spread for the new year. Click on the title. It'll take you over to the, to the article. And then you can scroll down. You kind of have to scroll down to the bottom is where the image of the spread is. It's in the form of a pyramid. And so instead of doing 20 cards, this is only 10 cards. It's a little less unwieldy than some of the other New Year's spreads out there. And I think has a lot more information to it. Also, because of the time of the year, Mary, we can look at this, or I see it as a Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, right. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, the, the positions are pretty straightforward. And um, the first one at the very top of the pyramid, we could even look at that as the star on the Christmas tree, you know. So, <laughs> it's the Christmas tree spread here, a gift for the new year, right? Um, it's the overall energy of the year, basically. And so that's going to give you a hint how the whole year is going to go, depending on the card, of course. And the next layer below that has two cards, uh, a positive change and a negative change. Pretty straightforward there. And then the next layer has three cards. And I love these, by the way, that uh, the next two cards are probably my favorite in the spread. Something to look forward to. That's really neat. And something to focus on, which kind of goes hand in hand with the first card, uh, the overall energy. You know, what are you going to be focusing on this year? And then something to look out for, a little cautionary thing there um, might line up with actually uh, a negative change the card above it in fact if you look at the spread Mary you can go down the left side leading to the first quarter of the year and go down the right side leading uh, all those cards are leading up to the end of the year and that is the bottom of the spread actually it's four cards one card for each quarter instead of doing you know a card for every month, which I, I find kind of, uh, personally, I, I find it a little silly. And, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't like reading out beyond six months anyway when I do readings, but that's just my personal preference as a, as a reader. I think the, uh, the timelines get too diverged the farther out you go because there's so many decisions to be made throughout the year. So these cards are just giving you a hint. You know, at uh, the first three months, the second three months, and so forth. First, second, third, fourth quarter. So, what do you think? Awesome. I think it's awesome. I really, really yeah. like this spread. Yay. And, oh, Gene's you know, in the chat room. Said it looks fun. And it is fun. And, you know, what's funny is we had talked about, you know, kind of, you know, the to give people an example of, of how this works, you know, exchanging readings for each other. And I actually used Oracle cards for your reading doing this spread. So it's a very adaptable spread too that you can also do with Oracle cards if you oh, wow. if you don't read tarot. So it's fantastic. That's awesome. Yes, I remember last week's show and you said that uh uh you rarely get a reading from me. So you wanted a reading. So that's what we're yes. going to do. Let's do an example of it. And by the Yay. way, you know, after you read that article and listen to these examples, you know, go out and try this spread and then let me know right there on the article uh, at the, you know, towards the bottom, you can actually leave comments. So when you do the spread, you know, let me know how it worked out for you. You know, this is a brand new spread, literally came up with it 
what, a week ago. And so, it, you know, this is my first time using it for Mary. And um, I'd like to get everybody's feedback on how it worked out for them as well. So remember, you'll find the article under articles at thetarotguild.com. And leave your comments there. You can also go to my page, thetarotguild.com slash DAX. And there's a lot of ways to contact me right there. You can contact me right through my page even and let me know. I, either way is fine with me. I would love to hear from you guys. And so, you know, let's go through it. You know, uh, we'll, we'll start with the, the top here. And, you know, you, sh you shuffle the cards any way that you like. And you can lay the, lay the spread out however you'd like. Maybe you want to start at the bottom and build it up. Or maybe you want to start at the top and put the first card down, the next two, the next three, the next four. But I suggest starting with the top card. Start with the overall energy of the year. And what I got for you, Mary, is focus and courage. So this wow. year is all about getting focused and having courage to move forward with your plan. I just need a plan. <laughs> yeah. You just need a plan. And, and the card that I got was the Queen of Swords, okay? And... You know, the Queen of Swords is very analytical. It, it's an interesting – when I first saw the card, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I had to think about it for a second. And, and then it really hit me, you know, that this card is – she's got the single sword there. It's about getting focused, having a plan. It's about using your intellect, being an analytical in your approach, uh, remembering your independence. It's a card of independence as, as well. And uh, this card, along with – you know, the, the whole spread, actually, as I look at the whole spread, in fact, I'm going to have to pop up the image of the spread after the show in the groups for everybody to look at <laughs> so they can take a look at what, you know, what cards I got. But um, it, it all seems to be focusing on your career and business, really, is, the, is what I'm yeah. getting here. Yeah. Cool. So the next card is a positive change. You know, this is a change that can happen in 2020. And uh, I got the Nine of Pentacles, you know, the Nine of Pentacles, wow. that self-made woman. I always pictured you that way anyway. And it, it kind of continues the theme of independence and the business focus from the first card. And uh, talks about, you know, a positive change coming in, in this area, you know, productive and well-deserved success in 2020. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the new year in the beginning of the show, and you asked me how I'm feeling about it, and I am feeling very optimistic about it. I think it's going to be great for all of us here. And then, uh, you know, you, you have to have both sides of the coin. You can't have the good without the bad, so there's a, a, a negative change card. And I look at this as kind of a cautionary card. It's, uh, as we say in tarot, with all outcomes, their potential outcome. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just uh, showing us what to look out for, which actually there's a there's a card later on in the spread for that, but this one doubles for that as well. And wham, I got the devil card for you, which came up <laughs> look in out a reading for, the for devil. one. Oh, <laughs> look out for the devil, you know. It's kind of, you know, the devil card is attachments to things especially things mm. in the past, addictions, all those kind of things. And it, it, it's interesting. I, mean, I, I think that would definitely be a negative change for you because I just don't picture you that way. You don't seem to be the kind of person that's prone to this, okay? So mm -hmm. I, I'm taking it more as a caution to look out for things like that. Like don't be too – you know, we're talking about business and your career and, and really moving forward and onward and upward and abundance in 2020. So, you know, don't get attached to the money aspect of it. You know, stick to the plan and stick to the, the passion be, be, uh, mm. behind what you're doing, you know. Oh, and, can, I ask, can I ask a quick yeah, question? Could that, cause I think Because I think of the devil sometimes, too, about, like, falling into, like, negative patterns, too. You know, or negative, you know, habits. And um, 
with sure. all of this energy you're talking about, like I could, you know, the one thing that pops out is like procrastination. That would be my devil is like procrastination. <laughs> like when it comes up, I'm like, uh, I, I can procrastinate sometimes. So maybe with all that, I've got to have a plan and everything. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't procrastinate about having the plan. <laughs> Anything along those lines, obsessions, illusions, addictions, I'd say, you know, don't get attached to success coming only through one avenue, especially things mm. you've already done. Don't be attached mm. to, okay, it has to happen this way. You know, there's, you can create other right. streams of income, other things around your career. I think that's, you know, what I'm getting getting on that. And then we move down to the next layer, something to – to look forward to, and I got the Eight of Cups. That's always a nice card to see. You know, it's moving onward and upward. It's kind of the theme of the spread, you know, moving onward and upward and suggesting that you are going to be able to move beyond any attachments that are suggested by that previous card there and, you know, really gain some emotional release in some areas, allowing you to move forward. You're going to be able to let go and and uh, move onward and upward. So that's awesome. something to look forward to, right? Yeah. And something to focus on, the heart of giving, okay? It's the Six of Cups is the card for hmm. the focus here, you know. So that's what you should be focusing on. And like I said, back on the uh, the Devil card, not being uh, attached to the money aspect, you know, uh, just hold on to that giving space, you know, helping others. And that's where your, you know, true fulfillment's going to come through. You know, that nine of pentacles. It's a theme that's running through this entire spread, really, actually. And something to watch out for. Here, mm. Here's that that side of the coin again. Perfectionism, which ah. goes hand. And, and it, I got the world card for this, by the way. If you're wondering what the card was, the world card, and um, it goes hand in hand with what you just said about procrastination you know we want to we want things to be perfect before we put them out in the world and i think this is a caution that um you know watch out for that that you should be getting it out there you know uh it, it should be shoot ready aim instead instead of ready aim shoot you know get right. it out there and course correct as needed Whew. yep and then a, a little glimpse of the year, the four quarters of the year here. So the, the very first quarter, I got the Page of Wands. So January, February, March, an infectious enthusiasm for life. Okay, so a new love of life and, you know, getting getting ready to strike out in the world with your business and career especially. Uh, there might be some research or assessment required early on so you can find your focus and start producing. Remember you said, I need to have a plan when I say yeah. have a plan. It's like, well, you got to get the plan first. Yeah. So that's what the first quarter is going to be about. Now the second quarter, um, I got the five of swords. It could, it could be leaning towards negative thoughts, communication problems in the second quarter. That's April, May, June. You may find yourself Slowing it down, slowing down a little bit from that initial great enthusiasm for life that you have in that first quarter there. Uh, some negative thoughts coming in, um, maybe dealing with some problems around communication. But you will have mm. developed some success at this point. But, you know, beware of the costs involved. You know, you need to take time out for yourself and recharge and then refocus and get back at it. Um, the third quarter is, is kind of similar, July, August, September, because I got the Ten of Wands, card, you know, stress and burdens. And so oh. once you get past the middle of the year, once you get past the middle of the year, you're going to really be multitasking. You're going to have a lot going on. So what you need to do is prepare ahead of time for this, you know, um, you're moving towards your goals, you're having some success, but you're feeling some overwhelm at this point. Uh, so, you know, 
be sure to remember and and to build in self-care. Take some time off if you have to, or at least put a few things on the back burner and, you know, push forward. You know, you can always pick them up later, and that, that'll keep the momentum going so that, you know, it doesn't slow down in that third quarter there. And then the fourth quarter, things start looking up. Got the Six of Pentacles. Yay! Yes. So, uh, again, with the giving, charity, generosity, gratitude. Um, awesome. Yeah, it, it's going to start really coming through the successes in that fourth quarter. It's a time to reflect and be proud of what you've accomplished and kind of sit in gratitude, okay? Uh, it's a time to return to balance. All the sixes are about a return to balance after the chaos of five. Um you want to return to balance after that more stressful second and third quarter that you're going to go through. And you've accumulated some abundance, so now you need to look for ways you can give back to others. And, yeah, I know I said that giving and helping is a focus through the whole year, and it's kind of a theme of this whole spread here, but um, this is a, a, a shift to a different kind of giving. It's karmic. Uh, mm. You should be creative here. And so by getting into that gratitude feeling space and giving back, especially in new and creative ways, not only are you helping others, but you're helping yourself because you're going to continue that flow of abundance telling the universe, I want more of this. And so that will keep the momentum going into the next year, you know, allowing you to realize even greater reasons. Jeez. So there you go. Wow. Here's an example seeing the New Year's spread. My goodness, I love it. And and I did a reading for you as well. And I have to say that another thing about this spread that's really interesting is not only can you use it with oracle cards, but even with oracle cards, a theme can be revealed. So how you were kind of seeing a theme running through the whole spread, I saw a theme running through the spread I did for you as well. Right, and it's really interesting. I use um, <laughs> because how could I not? I use the Oracle of the Unicorns deck <laughs> <laughs> because when I think of decks, I think of unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> right. I'm gonna use that line, unicorns. <laughs> right, but okay. So the overall energy of the year, the card I got was polarity. Now, I feel like this is something that's even been coming up on a lot of the show today. The the polarity card is about integrating the shadow side, integrating what seems like opposites, things that maybe, you know, we've kind of put on the back burner or, or, or kind of put to the side because we don't want to deal with it. It's like, I feel like it's saying, like, bring that in, and especially things that, you know, seem like opposing to each other. Um and also, you know, it's going to be a great year for shadow work as well. You know, as as we all know, there can be no light without the dark. And, you know, that, that idea of um, polarity is really an idea of balancing everything, balancing the things that seem to, like, kind of push up against other things. Um, and then the, the card I got for a positive change is nature, okay? Um, so – you know, grounding ourselves, doing some earthing, getting out in nature a little bit, taking time to smell the flower stacks. <laughs> um, and the the thing that's interesting to me, though, really is like, okay, we start with this polarity, this idea of these opposites. And the next two cards, we have the positive change, which we got the card of nature. And for a negative change, we got the card of magic. And it hit me. That in, a, that in a sense, those can be seen as opposites, nature versus magic, what's happening naturally around us, what seems to magically manifest, you know. So this whole thing is like really finding a way to integrate both the nature side and the magic side. So, you know, how can that show up? It's saying that like, yes. That there's a there's a lot to be said 
for you know good things to be said for magic, however we d- uh, define that word. And so to see that come up as a negative change might be a little bit off-putting. But sometimes it's like we need to ground our our magic, you know. So when we're working with metaphysical things, when we're even when we're working with the law of attraction and stuff, we we have to also like remember like okay we're still connected to the earth as well that we're still a part of that that there's a way to kind of bring that magic in right. so that it naturally flows and i think that's what that polarity is about it's like integrating like both sides of the coin you know um and then something to look forward to i got the card of rebirth so this could be a year where you really feel like, you know, you, you're you going through a bit of a rebirth. Um, with rebirth, it, it talks about, you know, it's not really a need to reinvent ourselves, but it's just that we can birth ourselves a new reality, that we can create the conditions that we want. So with all this magic and everything going on, this could be an amazing year for you because the next card something to focus on. I got the card of abundance. So I think this is going to be a sensational year for you when it comes to abundance, when it comes to like really feeling like it's powerful. You know, it feels like we're really like in the flow, like we've connected all the dots. Everything maybe last year or years previous that like half worked or worked to a certain point, I feel like this is, a chance this year to kind of remove those limitations. Um, I totally feel and, that. And then what's funny is there's something to look out for. I got the card of adventure, you know. So that that temptation to take a dare or do something totally off the wall, like well, watch out for that. <laughs> you might you might go too far, you know. I feel like it's saying like, okay, you can have fun, you can be adventurous, but you know, kind of like keep that in check a little bit because you really, I think you're really going to have this great flow going. And so don't like, you know, go off on a wild tangent, you know. Um, and then when we look at the, you know, kind of the overview of the year there with the with the quarters, the first quarter is about passion so you may feel like really fueled by passion for the first quarter of the year and then uh where does that take us the second quarter is about growth so i think the second quarter is when you're really going to see like the boom you know things really happening 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 and what's funny is like you're doing all of this work you're working on all of this stuff you're creating abundance you're following your passion things are happening things are growing and the third quarter of the year is about receiving from others so at some point you know all the all the effort and uh, all the energy that you're uh you know kind of you know using and (laughs) using up and putting out there and and having that grow and grow and grow for some reason, the third quarter of the year, this idea of, like, people giving back to you, the universe giving back to you, all of a sudden, like, you receive the reward of all of that. And then the end of the year, it's so funny, I got the dance card. So I just see you going through this year, and, like, the last part of the year, you're, like, doing the happy dance. It's like, wow, this has been a great Ooh. year. And just kind of enjoying it. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome! Dead on too. And the, and I'm the other thing about this, more and more. <laughs> it's so much fun. And the other thing I would say about the dance card too is like, look, you know, dance is so connected to rhythm. It may be that finally, you know, it, it, by the by the end of the year, you really feel like, okay, I've hit a rhythm now, and everything is just like it's just like playing music and moving along to it. By the way, in the chat room, Gene mm-hmm. Mori said, you know that card about uh, what to look out for? She said, don't ride a unicorn. Don't go off on <laughs> too wild tangent. 
<laughs> exactly. So ride a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know that they like to be ridden except by fairies. Who knows? Yeah. Well, thank oh, you for that. Reading. That was great. Yes, and thank you for the reading you gave me. My goodness, I'm like, oh my gosh, 2020 is going to be wild. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, though. I really am. And, and then, like you, I'm so glad 2019 is finally we can say goodbye to it. <laughs> you know, I'm done with 2019. Oh, yeah, too. Big time. <laughs> All righty. Well, oh, we I did... are. Go ahead. Or are, you are, we at the, uh, are we at the top of the hour? Do we have time for a couple more calls, maybe? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say we're kind of at the, we're almost at the bottom of the, or the top of the, of the end of the show. How about that? Can I just say that? <laughs> I can't get, get this top bottom thing. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm making myself laugh even more. Um, but yeah, do you want? How do you feel? Do you want to take a couple more calls here? We've definitely got, we've got calls to take. Sure, and I want to let people know that on that article that I wrote about this spread, you'll find it in articles, once again, the tarotguild.com, and uh, on that page, I put a New Year's reading offer. If you'd like me to do a New Year's reading for you using this spread, it's delivered via email, and I'm going to throw in a free full custom numerology report. And it's going to have your personal year number for 2020, an explanation of the world year number uh, four. We're going into a four year here. And your full chart of nine numbers as well. And it's just $67. You can order it right from that page, right from the article there. Just click the order now button and then contact me through my page, thetarotguild.com slash DAX. And we'll get you going on a New Year's reading. So I just wanted to offer that real quickly as well. Awesome. So, who's been waiting the longest? Mm, okay. It looks like area code 917. Area code 917. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, guys. How are you today? Good. How are you? What's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, this is Terry. And I'm calling from New York City. Terry, did you say? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. And did you want a mini reading today? Please, yes, for the 2020 upcoming year. Okay. So you just kind of want to know, like, what what stands out, like what sort of shows up when we mm-hmm. look at your up, upcoming year. Okay. Well, I think. I think you're up, I think Terry. It's, I think it. I think I guess it's me. <laughs> All right, so let me just shuffle a little bit here. See what see what comes up in the cards when we just say twenty. What's coming up for in twenty twenty for Terry, New York mm-hmm. City? Mm, wow, jeez. Okay, so there's a there's a lot coming up here. Um. You know, the, I wanted to start with one thing. The, the only major arcana card I got was the star card, okay? And that connects to, like, our hopes, our aspirations. You think of, like, wishing upon the star. So that might be something you might think about. Like, what is it that's really, like, in your, you know, on your wish list? Or what are you hoping for? You know, what is it that would be like the pinnacle of um, a good thing to happen for you. And you can think about that. You know, what's interesting is, like, it seems to be possibly connected to love, okay? Mm -hmm. We have a Knight of Cups coming up. We have the King of Cups here as well. And we have the Page of Pentacles, too. So that could be indicating that, like, there may be like a new phase coming into your love life. Um, with a with a page of pentacles, I feel like it's about like getting to know somebody, you know, getting to know somebody better, um, spending more time, you know, um, with a special somebody. And the part of this though too is connected to this idea of like, okay, um, 
we need a new kind of, it, it's almost like we need to, like, you know, start from scratch in 2020. We need to, like, be able to, like, hit the reset button, you know, and when it comes to this, I mean, it's really pulling me into this area of love life for some reason. So I, I feel like it's saying, like, the end of one phase, the beginning of another, and in this fresh phase, we can take our time to really, you know, communicate. Pages are about communication as well, so that we have a kind of interaction that, that really is fulfilling. It's what we hope to have with somebody. So that's what I'm getting. It's really strange. So let's see what Dax gets. Hey, Dax. How are you? Oh, really good, Terry. Are you ready for 2020? Yes, I'm ready for 2020. Yep. I'm getting, though, that it's going to be kind of a little roller coaster of the year. <laughs> um, it, it's a real transformative year is what's coming to us. And I, I did get the Knight of Cups, too, like Mary did. And uh, I think, he, it, you know, both of us getting that, you know, really could be hinting towards uh, those rom- romantic angles there. But I also think it's talking about um, acquiring some emotional fulfillment, really. Yes, yes. Yeah, but it's going to require some work. It real, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, lot of work. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in for it. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yep, and you know, I actually am looking at uh, four of the five cards as as quarters of the year, uh, taking that bottom rung of of our New Year's spread there, and you really hit the year hit the payment running with the chariot card in the first quarter of the year. And uh, you're setting off on new journeys, uh, victories, but it, it's triumph through adversity. And, and, you know, and I hate to be Debbie Downer, but really mm-hmm. uh, this, this year is going to require the struggle. In fact, the very next card for the second quarter is the five of wands, which is about struggle. Rivalry and competition, legal battles, courage in a time of struggle. If you can make it through these bumps in the year, it, it, you're going to come out at the end of the year. But and, and by the way, the very last quarter is that Knight of Cups. Uh, you're going to come out at the end with that emotional fulfillment. In the third <laughs> okay. quarter, mm-hmm. I got the Judgment card in the third quarter. That's a big awakening. It, it could be it's going to be transformative for sure. It could be a spiritual calling. Uh, it could be uh, anything along those lines. Uh, a big awakening. I call it the cosmic wake up call card. You know, Gabriel's blowing his horn there, and uh, it, it's going to take a little while. You're, you're going to go through those first couple of quarters, and you're going to be like, "What's going on here?" But then by the, mm-hmm. the third quarter. You're going to have the wake up. You're going to be like, aha, that's what Dax was talking about. You know, that uh, you're going to come out the other end with emotional fulfillment then. By, mm-hmm. you know, gaining your success through the, uh, the adversities, the struggles that you go through. And that's how we all go, right? Okay, sounds good. Okay. Yep. So that's what I'm getting. Okay. Well, I'll talk back to you guys. Uh, that sounds good. It's, yeah, it's a few hey. things I have to clean up. Yes, yes, you're right. Yep, you're definitely going to grow. Yeah, yeah but okay. it, it, it ends well. <laughs> you know, it ends well. Yes. That's a good yes, thing. Yes, that's okay. Sounds and it, good. And it and again, with that star card, you know, it's like, you think about that. Think about what is it, you know, that you really want to happen? What is it that you're hoping for? How can you bring that energy down to to being a, a real tangible thing, you know? 
So. All yeah. right. Well, thanks so much for calling. Happy New Year. Okay. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, and Happy New Year to Dax. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Terry. Awesome. Well, I think we have time for one more call. And let's see here, uh, area code 914. Area code 914, caller, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Thank you for taking my call. Thanks for calling. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Christine, and I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Christine from PA. Awesome. Yes. And did you want a mini reading? Yes, please. Okay, and what was your question? Um, I guess, I mean, I honestly, it, it could be about anything. I don't have a job right now. I don't have a, I don't have a love life. So I'm just wondering, you know, what's coming up. Is anything going to happen? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So job, love life, anything. Let's see what comes up Dax. So I think it's, uh, I think it's your turn, right? Am I getting this right? <laughs> That's right. Oh, both can come up because we got the Ace of Swords and and the the Knight of Cups shows up yet again. That's the uh, the central focus card actually is that emotional fulfillment, and it could be hinting towards uh, a potential relationship coming in. Um, gosh, what's the timing on this? Looks more like spring. Uh, the it's a cup card, the Knight of Cups, water. It could be hinting towards a, a Cancer or Scorpio or Pisces coming in. And uh, the Ace of Swords is talking about focus, that focusing on a single idea and, and moving with it. It's got the Nine of Wands saying, suggesting you have all the skills to provide value to other people. And, and that's all jobs are, jobs, careers, businesses. Everything we do is providing value for other people. Right. You have the skills. You just need to get focused on that. And the moon card shows up. Remember, that was the card of the day, and I told people mm-hmm. to look at the shadow side, what's holding you back. You know, whether it's the, the, the romance, relationships, or uh, finding the right job, career, business, along those lines. We call it secondary gain in hypnotherapy when we're doing hypnotherapy with people that there's these hidden, sometimes not so hidden, but so, sometimes often hidden uh, secondary gains. We're, we're getting something out of not losing the weight. We're getting something out of not quitting smoking, not going to the gym like we should be. And it covers all areas of our life, including finding the right room relationship and finding the right job and it's hard to look at this because it's sometimes it's things from our past it's past relationships it's past work and and career things you've done before you know that we we tend to not want to look at um, the issues the failures anything that happened in the past and that's what the moon card is suggesting is is to you know look for that what are these things that are preventing you from getting what you want? What's the secondary gain? Because once you know what that is, now you can overcome it because you can right. replace it with something else. You can, you can answer that question through other means. And then the rest of the cards suggest about uh, then getting a clear focus on what you really want so that you can draw that in. In fact, the whole thing is is kind of uh, bookended by the Ace of Swords in the beginning, and the last card is the Knight of Swords rushing in towards the other card. Okay, and so that's being uh, the Knight of Swords is clever and skillful, courageous, you know, even thriving in difficult situations, the archetypal, you know, warrior. Okay, he also has... uh, psychic vision, great communicator. But he, the thing I want you to notice is he's got that single sword. 
And what was the first card? The Ace of Swords with that single sword. Swords are thoughts and ideas. you got to get really focused. What do I want in 2020? Write that down on a piece of paper. And now let's see okay. if Mary might have some more hints as to mm-hmm. all of this. What are you getting, Mary? Thank you. Well, the first card I got was the Knight of Swords, which is really kind of there interesting. <laughs> so there's, um, you know, and really, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, with the, with the Knights, we're talking about movement, you know, so how do we, you know, the Knight of Swords, well, you know, he he's got that single-minded focus. It's like he figured it out. He figures out what he's going for. He can be analytical, but it's, it's also like cut through all of the crap you know, and just go forward and keep that goal in mind. The thing about the Knight of Swords also is that, like, we can't be, you know, we can't, like, charge forward on our on our mighty steed if we're, you know, stuck in a rut, okay? Mm-hmm. So I feel like there is going to be a need for, some evaluation and some assessment. We have the three of wands that comes up to me. That's a card of assessing. And it, and it says that, like, well, we're in this period of time where, you know, like, like maybe we don't have a lot going on. There's not a lot happening. It's actually a terrific time to, like, figure it out, examine things more. You know, uh, the three of wands is a card of the observer where it's like, okay, you know, what's working? What isn't working? What's my best next move? And then with mm-hmm. the Knight of Swords, you take that and you go for it. Um, the the other thing that comes up to is the Four of Swords. The well, Four of Swords is like when we need to, like, re- recuperate, we need to relax, we need to, like, have a chance to, like, kind of breathe out all all of the stuff that's just been weighing us down a bit you know you you see the in the in the imagery of the card you see like the 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 soldier who's been through the battle and it's a bit weary and just it's like i just need to rest for a minute i need to regroup <laughs> a bit um so it, so that may be something that happens first before we can really like take off towards our goal but the the other thing, um, too, though, I end with the Six of Swords, and the Six of Swords is one of my favorite cards. It's a card of healing, you know. It's like going from, like, where it's been, like, kind of rough going to all of a sudden, you know, it's like more, you know, smooth sailing, tranquil waters. We can, like, kind of, you know, just, like, sail on through. So, and, you know, also the thing of Sometimes the Six of Swords is literally connected to healing, too. So, you know, the healing arts, um, if that's something that either you're interested in or maybe you might benefit from, go get a Reiki treatment, go get some aromatherapy, something to kind of, you know, do something for yourself to to make yourself, you know, feel more energized. Um, and then in the, in the center of everything is the King of Pentacles. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, we don't have a we don't have a job right now. The King of Pentacles could be representing someone that maybe you know would have a job for you. But it's a it's a card of a abundance. It's a it's also a card of advancement, and you know it's got this real dependable quality. So you know we have our single minded focus of the of the Knight of Swords, and and he's going for it. And when we run into the King of Pentacles. I feel like we have to kind of like take a pause there and kind of listen. So there may be even an earth sign man that uh, may be coming into your world this year. Uh, you know, or earth signs, of course, are like Taurus and Virgo and Capricorn. Um, Capricorn. They might be mm, beneficial to you in, in some way. Are you a Capricorn? Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so, so, you know, those are some things to consider, but ending with the Six of Swords to me is a great sign that things are going to improve for you. And I, I feel like most of the cards I got are really pointing more towards um, the the career job side of things. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I also very resonated a lot with the healing part because I do feel like I need healing as well. So I'll definitely do that. Awesome. There you go. Awesome. 
All right. Well, thanks so much for calling. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Bless you both. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to everyone because it's our last show. (laughs) There you go. It's the last psychic Saturday of 2019. So Happy New Year, everybody. Happy Psychic Saturday. I guess we are at the end of the show. I just wanted to remind everybody, join our Facebook group, Psychic Talk Radio on Facebook. It's easy to find. And also check out the new Tarot Guild website. Dax, did you want to leave our wonderful listeners with any gems of wisdom? (laughs) Maybe not gems of wisdom, (laughs) <laughs> Just remind everybody to join us on Monday for the last show for Psychic Talk Radio Network for 2019 on Catherine Hahn's Compassionate Light Healing and Guidance. So if we didn't get to your call today, we'll be taking calls on Monday's show. I'll be back on Friday, which is the 3rd of January. We'll be into the new year. It's our first show of the new year. Dr. Rose and I will be taking calls, and Mary will be back next Saturday. I'm really looking Yay. forward to that. A new ritual for a new year. I am Yay. so looking forward to that. The I other think thing I wanted to mention. Fun. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is going to be, uh, I'm going to be tuning in for that for sure. Listening in to you on uh, January 4th when you come back. And uh, three weeks from today, we are celebrating mm. the 10th anniversary of our very first Tarot Guild website. We've been on the net for 10 years, the, the Guild just had its 15th anniversary. The Guild's been around for 15 years. October 31st, 2004, but we're having our 10th anniversary of the first website, and we have this brand-new website, the thetarotguild.com, that you just mentioned uh, to really solidify that uh, that anniversary, as well as it's the anniversary of our first ever radio show, Carol Today Radio. We're going to be celebrating 10 years on the radio in three weeks, Mary. That's crazy. Time has flown. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you joined me not too far after I got going, and uh, Janet Boyer and and, uh, Maria Moss and uh, Gene Maury Pullman and uh, a whole bunch of uh, hosts in those first yeah. years, and it's just been quite a ride. It has been. I can't believe it's been that long because it feels like I don't know. It feels like it just happened the other day. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling old now. Yeah. <laughs> mhm. <laughs> Me too. Oh, so 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 much exciting stuff coming up. Yeah, it's going to be a big celebration on air. You really want to join us. I think that, I want to say that is January 18th, three weeks from today. Lots of big announcements. You're going to, you're going to love it. It's going to be a big celebration on air. And I'm hoping that, you know, Jean's actually in the chat room. She's listening into the show and uh, I hope she'll join us and, We'll see, you know, what uh, uh, voices from the past we can get mm. to come join us. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a lot. That would be cool. Absolutely. Great show. I want to thank all of our listeners and all of our callers. We don't have a show without you. And thanks, Mary. Happy New Year to thanks. you. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you, Dax. Happy New Year, everybody. We'll see you next year. <laughs> oh, bye. That's right. Good night, Grandpa. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Joe Boy. Happy Psychic Saturday.